Hi everybody, this is Dr. John Jaggi again and welcome to yet another episode. Always remember to like, subscribe and share. In this episode, we'll be looking at uterine fibroids. But before we discuss about uterine fibroids, let's try to find out what majority out there think fibroids are. According to my knowledge, I think a fibroid is a non-cancerous growth that may develop during a woman's childbearing years. And the causes are not well understood and they are listed out as family history of fibroids, obesity, among others. Uh, sometimes it's cancerous, sometimes it's not, and it's surgically removed. Um, fibroids are a reproductive tract problem among women, and mostly fibroids is not cancer. Fibroids occur in growths, inside or outside the walls of the uterus. So uterine fibroids are usually growth or swellings that are found in the woman's uterus or in another word is called a woman's womb. Um, these usually um, swellings or growth are found in different variety and if you think about it the uterus is made of different layers and we have the middle layer which is mostly a muscular layer and from these layers we know that's where the uterine fiber or this growth of these masses will develop from and they come in different sizes they come in different numbers and these fibers can cause different symptoms but one of the questions we ask ourselves what are usually the risk factors for developing uterine fibroid? Well, the real cause for developing of uterine fibroid has actually not been established. We don't know what actually causes them. But there's one thing that we, we know. Number one, we know that some of the risk factors include race. What does that mean? That means women of color or African origin women will have more risk of developing uterine fibroid than com uh, comparing to other races. The second thing that we also find is that women who delay in getting children or getting pregnant, they are at an advanced risk of developing uterine fibroids. Number three, we also find that young girls who start their periods a little bit early or women who go into their menopause a little bit late, they usually at a higher risk of developing uh, uterine fibroid. Obesity has also been found to cause uterine fibroid. And more importantly, we also have seen that the lifestyle also has some certain links into developing uterine fibroid. What does that mean? What has been found is that women who consume alcohol, of course, some might end up getting a little bit of increased body weight. They are at a risk of developing uterine fibroid. Therefore, the question is, Dr. Njagi, what are the, some of the protective measures that we need to, um, to protect a woman from developing uterine fibers? Unfortunately, there's really none that has really been established. But we have found that in case we modify the lifestyle by watching our weight, consuming uh, less of alcohol and use of contraceptives, these are some of the factors that have actually been found that they will reduce the risk of developing uterine fibroids. Again, we also know that uterine fibroids, which I had not mentioned, there's genetic predisposition. That means if you have a sister or your mother had uterine fibroid, there's high chances that you might as well develop uterine fibroids. There's one question that is always asked, and I think this is a myth that we need to demystify. Um, are you trying fibroid cancer? And the answer to that is to majority, the answer is no. These are what we call benign or non-cancerous growth. But a little bit slow on that. 
we have seen that in very few number of women that some changes can happen to these fibroids and a woman might develop cancer but then the risk is very very low and unfortunately we as clinicians there's no way we are able to really tell the difference between the one that has changed to becoming malignant or cancerous or those that have not changed to malignant or cancerous but there's one thing that we ask now the patient when they come to us is how has been the progression or development uh, or growth of these uh, masses in the uterus so if we find that the growth has been quite fast then we might be a little bit cautious and we might want to dig deep a little bit deeper and think there's be something more than uh, uterine fiber which again as I mentioned I repeat again it is not cancerous so how does a patient get to know they have uterine fibers or what are the symptoms of uterine fibers the commonest cause uh, uh, presentation of uterine fibers is heavy bleeding especially during menstruation or in between menstruation and we have found that if the fibroids are actually large enough uh, they can cause a woman to go into anemia that means they bleed a lot during their menses or there's going to be spotting in between their um, their menses uh, and this will reduce on the level of their blood that means they are going to develop anemia again we have say that these fibroids can be different in sizes we can have one which is as big as 20 centimeters in one of the uh, uh, the longest dimension and we can have multiple we can have one two three or sometimes even a hundred uterine fibers so it's not very um, uniform on how they develop now in terms of symptoms it's going to depend on the number and the sizes so if you have very large fibers we expect that the symptoms are going to be more pronounced as compared to a patient who has smaller or fewer number of fibers if you have multiple fibers let's say 70 fibers that means you're going to have more symptoms or your symptoms are going to be more pronounced as compared to a patient who has two or three fibers of importance but this is for us um, uh, doctors we also need to find where exactly is the location of the fiber now if you look this if you think this to be a uterus you can have the uterus outside or in the middle or inside now the fiber which are found closer to the inside wall of the uterus which are also called sub mucosal fiber these are very symptomatic and this cause a lot of bleeding so those are going to be the typical presentation or symptoms of uterine fibers. But for the most patients, they don't have symptoms. So you might be out there and um, you are going for a natural a sound scan or for an MRI for something totally different, has no relationship uh, with your uterus, and then it's found that you have uterine fibroid. Uh, these are what we call accidental or an incidental finding when you're looking for something else and you find fibroid. So what exactly do we know? We know that 40 to 80% of women, that means 40 out of 100 to about 80 uh, out of 100 women, especially of African origin, will have uterine fibroids. But as long as they are not bothering you, there's really no reason to really worry about it. So other symptoms that they might cause, I've talked about uh, bleeding, uh, heavy bleeding during menses, bleeding in between your menses. If these fibroids are really large, they are going to cause your abdominal or the lower part of your abdomen to bulge, so you feel like it's really growing big. It's like you have a baby or Sometimes it's been called a pseudo pregnancy or a not a true pregnancy. Uh, it might also compress the bladder so you find that you're urinating frequently every time you cannot hold um, urine for a, um, a prolonged period of time like you used to uh, before. This can as well um, uh, cause pregnancy losses if you have big fibroids or these fibroids again are close to inside closer to the inside lining of the uterus they will they'll reduce the cavity or the size where the baby grows and you find the woman keep losing pregnancies so anytime we have any of this presentation or constipation because you have this huge fiber that are growing in in, in the woman's uterus and then they are compressing either the bladder anteriorly or posteriorly they are compressing the rectum that we need to investigate the patient what investigation do we run simple we send the patient for a test called a pelvic ultrasound scan and the pelvic ultrasound scan we are able to see 
the size of the uterus, if they are fibroid, the number of the fibroids. But before even sending the patient, we'll have examined them and we'll feel the size of the uterus. Ideally, the uterus size should be about eight centimeters, which is the size of an orange. Uh, anytime we find out that we can feel by, by examining the patient and touching their lower part of their abdomen and we can feel uh, there's a mass which is hard and firm then we might suspect this uterine fibroid to confirm the diagnosis we'll send the patient therefore as i've mentioned for an ultrasound scan and then we can send them also for an mri if we really want to find the number of the fibroids so once we have established the patient has fibroids what therefore is a management a few considerations we need to consider number one are these fibroid causing the patient any issues? If there are no issues, then we might as well tell the patient no problem. The reason is because the fibroids sometimes they tend to reduce in size and sometimes they can increase in size. At what particular time do we find the, uterus, um, the fibroids increasing in size, especially during a um, period where a woman has high levels of hormones and particularly during pregnancy. So if a patient has more fibroids, we also need to advise them and tell them during pregnancy, there's a high risk that these fibroids might grow bigger in size. So if then that's the case, what is also true is that when a woman gets to menopause, they have reduced um, uh, women uh, hormones that means the uterine fibers tend to shrink so that means if a woman is a little bit elderly they have finished their um, 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 their family size they don't want any more children that means we can actually observe them and these fibroids really don't need to be treated. So in case a woman therefore has this uh, severe symptoms, they are bleeding and they have pain in the pelvis or they're having pain in the back, they have this mass they really don't like. So what options of treatment do we offer them? We have to consider two things. Number one, do they want babies or they don't want babies? So if they want babies, then we need to preserve the uterus. So what does that mean? We can either do surgery or we can give them medication. Unfortunately, we know there's really no medication that can really remove the, uterus, the fibroid. So this medication we give them most of the time, they only manage the fibroid for only a very short period of time, as long as you're taking the medication. So what is the ideal or the recommended treatment of fibroids? Number one, if we want to preserve the uterus, we perform a surgery where we remove the fibroid and leave the uterus. If a woman has completed size of the family, does not want any more babies, then we can go ahead and remove the uterus, a surgery called um, hysterectomy, that is removal of the uterus. Uh, in cases whereby now we are going to preserve the uterus, remove the fibroid, is a surgery called myomectomy. So surgery has been one of the commonest mode of treatment in patients who have uterine fibroids. So two options in terms of surgery. Number one, it can be open surgery. Open surgery is the way you go get an incision, cut, then we expose the uterus and then we can remove the fibroid. All, if it was removing the uterus, that can be removed. Or else the surgery can be performed laparoscopically. Laparoscopically, that means we are going to use a camera. We are going to um, create small wounds on the anterior abdominal wall all up, um, uh, and then introduce instruments. So, of course, in my previous video, you might want to check the advantages between open and laparoscopy, which we, of course, always recommend laparoscopic surgery. Again, that briefly about uterine fibroids and um, as always we say, please keep following us. Always remember to like, subscribe and share. Until next time, as always we say, remain healthy. Thank you so much.